We already knew that the Washington Post was biased against Bernie Sanders, but they decided to take it a step further and have an actual anti-Bernie Sanders marathon. So according to the media watchdog group FAIR, fairness and accuracy in reporting, they posted 16 negative stories about Bernie Sanders in 16 hours. So to give you some examples of those headlines, what Bernie Sanders still doesn't get about arguing with Hillary Clinton. Clinton is running for president. Sanders is doing something else. Here's something Ted Cruz and Bernie Sanders have in common. Nice. An awkward reality for Bernie Sanders, a strategy focused on whiter states. Now to summarize, all of these posts paint his candidacy in a negative light, mainly by advancing the narrative that he's a clueless white man incapable of winning over people of color or speaking to women. Even the one article about Sanders beating Trump implies this is somehow a surprise, despite the fact that Bernie Sanders consistently outpolls Hillary Clinton against the New York businessman. Now, what do they have to gain exactly by slandering Bernie Sanders? Well, the Washington Post was sold in 2013 to libertarian Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos, who is worth approximately $49.8 billion. Despite being ideologically opposed to the Democratic Party, at least in principle, Bezos has enjoyed friendly ties with both the Obama administration and the CIA. As Michael Oman Reagan notes, Amazon was awarded a $16.5 million contract with the State Department the last year Clinton ran it. Amazon also has over $600 million in contracts with the Central Intelligence Agency, an organization Sanders said he wanted to abolish in 1974 and still says he had a lot of problems with. Fair has previously criticized the Washington Post for failing to disclose when reporting on tech giant Uber that Bezos also owns more than $1 billion in Uber stock. So again, this is a major media organization that has ties to the Clinton campaign in some way. So now let's talk about Jeff Bezos and Amazon for a minute. Now this may be a bit awkward because Amazon is technically a sponsor of the Humanist Report. So what that means is that we're actually enrolled in an affiliate program with Amazon. So what they do is they'll generate a link for people with podcasts, for people with websites, and then you can direct your viewers to use that link. And then anytime somebody uses that link and then purchases something on Amazon, they will give you either four to 7% in commission. Now it's typically 4% unless people purchase a lot of products per month. I haven't made too much money for it, but again, this is a great way to actually raise revenue for independent media sources. And it's why uh, sources like the Young Turks, David Pakman, uh, Kyle Kalinske, all use this affiliate program. So even though they do provide this great service to support independent media and websites, you have to be objective. You have to call out bullshit when you see it. And I'm sorry, but that's what I'm going to do. So since the Humanist Report is part of this affiliate program, I'm sure that Jeff Bezos would have a problem with me saying that his greed is ruining the country. Jeff Bezos has nearly $50 billion. Even if he were to live to be a thousand years old, he could never conceivably spend all of that money. Yet there are various reports about Amazon where they are paying their workers unfair wages and furthermore, they're basically working in really unfair working conditions. There are some reports that literally state that people come to work in tears because of how bad the conditions are at Amazon. Furthermore, if his wealth and greed wasn't enough, he's presumably supporting a candidate that will enrich his wealth even further because that $50 billion, it's not enough. He has to get even richer and uh, get the State Department and the CIA to sign contracts that will enrich his wealth. So even though he claims to be a libertarian, it seems as though he actually really likes government and has profited from the government. So in actuality, he seems more like a corporate fascist to me than anything. Here's the thing about the Humanist Report. I will continue to report the truth and use facts and be objective regardless of the consequences. So if that means coming on air and talking shit about a sponsor, guess what? I'm going to do it. Now I want to get back to the Washington Post. So they responded to this by posting an article with the title, now the Washington Post ran 16 positive stories on Bernie Sanders in 16 hours, hashtag bias. Now here's what they said to defend themselves. In what has to be some kind of record, the Washington Post ran 16 positive stories on Bernie Sanders in 16 hours after his upset victory over Hillary Clinton in Michigan's Democratic presidential primary. It's obvious. The Post has a pro-Sanders bias. Are Post journalists even capable of criticizing the Vermont senator? Doubt it. So basically, they're going to play the sarcasm card in case you haven't uh, noticed that. Uh, but here's the thing. 
Their bias has already been exposed, now they're just doing this to cover their asses. We already knew that they were biased. I covered a story about a month ago where their editorial board wrote an article saying that Bernie Sanders' campaign is fiction field and it's not based on reality. Their entire editorial board penned this article. So if the editorial board pens this, then obviously that's representative of the aggregate Washington Post. Sure, you'll have some people who uh, don't agree with that and some people who will write pro Bernie Sanders articles, but by and large, we know the organization is biased and also that's in part due to a conflict of interest with your owner, Jeff Bezos. Now here's the thing, Hillary Clinton supporters will push back and say, Mike, you're either being conspiratorial or you're just overly biased yourself in favor of Bernie Sanders, so you're a hypocrite. But here's the difference between me and the Washington Post. See, I'm very open about who I support. I've worn Bernie Sanders shirts on the podcast. I've literally titled one episode the Bernie Sanders Report. See, I'm open about the fact that I support Bernie Sanders. What the Washington Post does is they try to hide the fact that they're in support of Hillary Clinton, and they write these articles under the guise of neutrality, when in actuality, they're trying to mislead people. See, here's the thing. What they do is they argue against Bernie Sanders using hyperbole. They don't provide any evidence or data to back up their claims. But for me, I'm objective. I actually use facts to state why Bernie Sanders is a better candidate than Hillary Clinton. I don't resort to hyperbole. I don't resort to ad hominem attacks on Hillary Clinton. All of my critiques are substantive. That's not the case with the Washington Post. If you don't like the position that I'm coming from with support of Bernie Sanders, you can click X. You could tune out. You could hit dislike. But I'm not lying to you. I'm telling you I support Bernie Sanders and I'm giving you reasons based on facts and statistics and evidence why not only he's a better candidate, but he's better on policy than Hillary Clinton. They don't even try to back it up with data. They don't even try to make a compelling argument. They just make these outlandish claims that his campaign is fiction filled and whatnot. Look, here's the deal. I'll put a link in the description box if you want to see uh, me break down that article because it was absolutely ridiculous and it proved that they're biased. And see, here's the thing. Humans are naturally inclined to have preferences. All these media pundits, they're clearly in the tank for Hillary Clinton, at least most of them are. And so they pretend to parade around as these neutral commentators when in actuality, they either have financial ties to Hillary Clinton, I've talked about this as well, or they just support Hillary Clinton, which is fine. Just be upfront about your support and it wouldn't be that big of a problem.